All right, I I think we're going live. Can you guys? Yo, Andy, good to see you, brother. So、uh, if you could hear me and see the screen, if you just give me like a thumbs up or、um, in the chat, I appreciate that. Just so I know,、uh, I know we're good to go. I like the duck logo. <laughs> He's got his legit headphones on.、He's、like, yeah, all right. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's the、um, yeah. They have all kinds of like overlays and um, um, like assets for you to use. So, oh, dude, Daniel, thank you so much. Hey, thanks for being here. I hope you all feel special because、um, both echoing. Yeah, because this is the very first one, which means like if I stumble and like fall on my face, you guys can all just laugh at me. You know, no problem. Go for it. <laughs> so I'll I'll just try try to give it. Maybe we should give it like another, I don't know, two minutes, and then we'll get started. You guys could go like bathroom break or grab some coffee, like I do. Yeah, just like my like GitHub mug. Just like my camera, dude. Look at, look at. Look, check, check this out, right? Like, focus, out of focus, focus, <laughs> out of focus. How cool is that? What is this technology? <laughs> yeah, I tried a few different、uh, cameras, and this worked out the best. So, I'm feeling. Like mine is too close to my face. It's a very big face. <laughs> that's that's where it is. So it's, we're gonna just roll with it. <laughs> just sorry, roll sorry with the natural. For, yeah. You know, yeah. Mom, does, do I have a big face? No, it's all right. No, no, you're beautiful. <laughs> you're beautiful just the way you are. Uh, might be. Replay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that, man. Yes, I um. Like I'm a noob, so I actually like click on like the actual YouTube channel, which has some sort of delay, so that that replayed it. But I close that tab, and you know, hopefully, yeah. I you know I don't even know I should like click on. I think it's automatically recorded. So、um, and then of course, Carl, I could edit out any kind of bloopers or you know, there's anything like if you're picking your nose unconsciously, I, I you know for sure I, I'll just let you know and I can edit that. <laughs> and、out. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Wasn't、well, gonna do it. I, I promise now, this.、Uh, no, I promise you, if you do it, I'll do it. Like I'll be like, "Hey,、okay. Carl, you know what?、It's、you know, solidarity." Like, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So just just a little background, right? Like I, I th Carl, thank you so much for doing this because we did it in such a short notice.、Uh, we're gonna grab coffee, and then、uh, I swear, forecast it says it's gonna rain. It's like sunny outside outside my window. But I swear, forecast was gonna said it was gonna rain, so I was like, you know, instead of coffee, why don't just do the stream? I swear, I wasn't trying to con you into doing this. <laughs> Sorry, and it is、uh, it's still raining a little bit out here, so. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. <laughs> so you get a pass. I feel. I, pass. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's Seattle for you. You like rain one day, then hail, and like the. I think after moving to Seattle, that was the first time I、um, I hear about the term wintering mix. It's like what the heck is that, right? <laughs> it's like oh, okay. It's like hail and rain and a mix of like crab all coming down together. <laughs> yeah. Yo, John, let me try this out. Bam! There you go. Whoa, oh, slick man. Yeah, yeah. Coffee for sure. All right. Oh, so, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Hey, man, everything sounds pretty good." Like, I guess I don't know if I'm hearing the same. Thing, oh, oh, no, like, no, no, that、fine. that was precisely what I did before. I was like, I was trying to monitor it away from like YouTube, and then I, but I had the mistake of clicking on, and then just like replaying it, and of course it feeds back to the mic. All right, you guys all ready? Yeah, yeah. All right, I I assume that's the case, and I I. I welcome you guys here for the very first episode of like our streaming.、Uh, I want to thank Carl for doing this because he's like you know a good friend, and we're gonna meet up for coffee. And then you know I kind of 
just con him into doing the stream instead. So, <laughs> so thank you, Carl. <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you, sir. And um, I'll let you introduce yourself later on. But like, I couldn't think of a better person to do this because uh, to be the first episode, especially because uh, you're someone who I respected a lot, and you did a lot of good stuff for the community. Right? It's just like cool for those open source project but I, I won't jump into it just now but you know you're an awesome person and uh thanks for doing this oh thanks for thanks for having me it's fun well yeah yeah, yeah. We'll, we will get coffee one of these days. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. so, i promise so there's, there, there, there's quite a bit of that around seattle you know although yeah. sanford might compete the title for best coffee but you know you and i both know it's seattle <laughs> I don't even drink coffee. It's like sacrilegious, but. Oh, okay. My bad. Then. You like an Maybe orange we'll... juice. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> All right. Gra we'll grab some beer one of these there days. Go. I'm into that. <laughs> All right. Cool. Hey, so if you guys have any questions, you know, go ahead and uh, type in into the chat uh, in the comments. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll try to keep an eye on, but like with everything going on, it's a bit difficult. So don't be offended if, if I don't get to it, but, you know, hopefully we could, um, you know, answer. <laughs> answer all of your questions and uh, address any concerns. And uh, hopefully, I mean, I'm sure it'll be a good experience because Carl is here. So um, let me go ahead and introduce the channel a little bit. This, uh, Like I said, this is the very first channel. And uh, this is kind of just an environment that kind of reflects my personality, right? Like I want to just kick back, relax, shoot the breeze with somebody. Um, sometimes I will have conversation with like smart people. And um, I want to, I, sometimes I, I get to pause and think like, dude, like if I could just like record this conversation, it'd be like so cool, right? Like that person is so smart and, and share a lot of wisdom. And I wish I could like replay that even just for myself. So this is kind of what it is, you know, I just want to um, share those knowledge. I want to find awesome people and just come on and kind of talk about things that are interesting to us. Um, and, um, at the same time, maybe, you know, I, I definitely will learn a thing or two. So hopefully, you know, you, you, you could do the same. So, so that's what it is. And, um, I'll go ahead and introduce myself first and then, you know, I'll give Carl the mic. I want to watch for time as well. So, um, so my name is Eric Cho. I am, uh, I wrote the book called Mastering Python Networking. It's nothing mastering about the book. <laughs> it's just like a bunch of easy script. Um, and, and networking related. What I really intended to do was uh, I wanted a, a place to, because when I wrote the book in 2017, there's no place that's specifically about network automation using Python. So um, I kind of ticked off, right? Like this is a great field and like I feel this is important enough to warrant at least one book. So I'm like, okay, I'll do this too, right? And then so I wrote that book the target audience was for my younger self, whereas like I made a lot of mistake during the journey. And I, I think like if by sharing that mistake, maybe you don't have to do the same. So that was the intention. And um, you know, now it's in third, third edition. I also work for A10 Networks, author some of the other books, but um, that's besides the point. The star of the day should be Carl. And so Carl, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about, about yourself, how awesome you are? God, I, I really prefer a low bar that you can just like you know, clumsily step over. So. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. Yeah. Carl's <laughs> this dude I met on the freeway. He was like doing this. I don't know what that means. But, you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like that. Thumbs he up. just showed up. <laughs> he just yeah. showed up. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess real quick, um, kind of traditional network engineer background, um, worked for partner, healthcare, military, whatever. And um, I don't know, six or something years ago at this point. I don't, I don't know. What is time even uh started kind of going down automation um side of things and found it to be pretty fun and so i've just kind of kept doing that probably like the only thing i'm like that's really interesting i or i think it's interesting is created a library called scrapply and a family of like i guess it's like a family of libraries um so it's like a python ssh client if you will it's not really technically an ssh client but it wraps a couple ssh clients um and gives you a nice way to interact with network devices in Python. And then there's kind of like a, a netconf. It's not a plugin. It kind of builds on top of the core thing. And then there's a config management thing, a PyTest plugin. And then I wrote it all in Go because I hate spare time. And uh, oh, who needs so, yeah, social life? Yeah, we yeah, got yeah. Facebook. Oh, wait, just just not Monday, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, anyways, yeah. Sorry, sorry, Kyle, go ahead. No, no, that, that, that's it, man. Like, yeah, so I'm just uh, slogging away with Python and Go stuff and uh, yeah. 
That's me. So Percentage Python and Go that you would say you spend your time on. And the following up question is how, how long have you been like, if, if you have to pick a date that you started with Python, how long has it been for you to feel like you're comfortable enough to like publish and source? Yeah. Um, so I guess first question is like day to day, like what's the divide? Yeah. At this point? What's the percentage? Mm -hmm. Uh, I think my work stuff is more Python just because it's kind of generally more friendly and like kind of common in the, I guess the network, you know, space, network automation space. So I tend to do more of that right. for work. Um, but I've been pretty much transitioning most everything to go for personal stuff just because it's new mostly to me. So I guess I'd say like, you know, 50, 50 ish at this point. Um, and then, yeah, I don't, I, I guess it's been like maybe about six years since I started kind of like, I'd maybe dabbled with like a, you know, hello world kind of thing here or there, but then started kind of going hard uh, at that point. So. Yeah. Do you want to, you don't have to disclose this, but like share kind of your day to day, what kind of network engineer do you do? Right. Cause enterprise is very different than service provider than public cloud and all of that. Right. Yeah. So yeah, that's a really good, Super good point. I've been bouncing around like a crazy person as I do. Um, so last couple of jobs were all service provider centric, uh, Pack Fabric and Twitch. Um, so doing a little bit of stuff there, um, put some really cool stuff. Like Pack of Fabric has a pretty cool like backend tech stack, and there's some really smart people there. So that was that was really cool. I, like before that, I didn't really do service provider stuff, um, but obviously that side of thing is like much heavier netconf, um, especially Pack of Fabric. Um, Nowadays, I'm working for a regional, uh, like VAR, Cisco partner, whatever. Um, so I'm doing kind of uh, building some content on the back end for, for like internal and for customers and then helping with random automation stuff. And then uh, I haven't been here too long at this point. So we'll be trying to kind of build some more tooling and services and, and that kind of thing. So it'll be more enterprise focused again. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know if that answers the question yeah. at all. <laughs> Oh, totally. Right. Cause like I said, I think what I found, uh, when I switched from like public cloud provider to enterprise world, it was just like, it was totally different. Right. Like, like, I just, like a better terms, I was in a bubble and, um, I never have to deal with like act directory, <laughs> I don't deal with email servers or, um, sand. That was the biggest thing. It's like, they had like this, <laughs> this crazy amount of sand and like, with the amount of disk they have, it's like, yeah, yeah, you like 0 0.0, you know, 3% of default rate. But if you're having this, that's like one disk failure of every week. And you just don't know which <laughs> one, right? Like you take your pick. It's like that, those were like the crazy things to me, like the implication on networking in the enterprise world. Um, yeah. So I, I think I answer the question and, you know, that kind of leads me into, you know, Kind of just a gateway experience and kind of, you know, in what we're going to talk about, you know, getting started with Python uh, for network automation. So that's your background, right? So, um, so I would kind of get that into our frame and then um, knowing um, that's kind of like the path you took me, right? Like everybody's shaped by their experience. So that, I think that's kind of, kind of important um, and interesting. Um, being a noob, you know, I, I thought we would start out with just like, what's the news that caught your eye to begin with? And um, I'll begin. Um, there's like this, the news that uh, this little uh, like face or something, you know, like I don't even I don't even know what they are. <laughs> no, it's Facebook, right? Facebook went down a couple of days ago, and um, I was uh, um, I think ten. It, right because everybody here understands that and however it interests you you could go as far as to that but um what i think is uh important is that um like we've all been there i saw some you know a bit toxicity <laughs> around that whole incident um i just want to kind of give my opinion right i think there's no need for that i myself have caused huge outages um in terms of monitoring value for the company i was working for um you know so so like i it, i 
I refrain myself from making any comments at all on that front. And so I was, that's just my one personal feeling about it. So I know, I know we chat about this before, Carl, but do you, do you have anything to say to that or? <laughs> I, uh, zero. No, no. I, yeah. I don't have much. I I've definitely broken stuff too. So I feel, and I feel for it. Um, yeah, yeah I, I don't know. It's definitely interesting just because it's so big and prevalent and whatever. Um, I think the, the memes about the, uh, what I think John put in chat, the bridging gap protocol that I've been circulating have been the best part of it. Because that's just, <laughs> yeah, just silly. Yeah, so, so I like that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, other, otherwise it's to me, it's like Facebook, like, okay, cool. For most people that scale and stuff isn't really relevant. So uh, like, I don't know. Yeah. So they're, in a, they're playing a different sport. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. totally right. Totally. I, and there's more we could go into, but let's, that's enough on, on that topic especially, you know, for what we're going to do today. So I think that's very relevant. But do you have any news that caught your eye you want to share? Or should we just like move directly into, you know, getting started with Python for network automation? Let's do it. I don't have that much exciting stuff going on. <laughs> <laughs> Outside of the, the Golang and Python and all that. So so we'll dive right into it. So um, yeah, so getting started with Python for network automation, and you, know, you guys feel free to type the questions, or you know, Kari, feel feel free to, to cut me off and, and all of that. So, um, so I think there's a, a few things that's kind of in general, right? Like that I feel um, that we should you should we should preface this with. So, um, so one thing there's like and yeses that I want to just talk about, like. Um, when you're a network engineer, you try to learn Python, keep trying, right? So, so the first thing is a no, is, is no, I don't think you need to be, you know, young, beautiful with like 6% body fat to learn coding. You know, that's definitely me. <laughs> and, you know, I get paid to do coding nowadays. So, um, yeah, you know, so like, don't worry about it. I, you know, it sounds kind of silly, right? Especially a 6% body fat, that, but but you don't need to be young. So there's a, a misconception around that you have to be like fall in love with QBasic at the age of six and create your first game at 10 and sell it for a million dollars before you, you can get it. You know, it's great for somebody who does that, you know, all, the, all the props, but that's not me. I think that's a definite no. Yeah, so um, so yeah. first that's, that's a no. Um, and, Second, I think this is actually my country by surprise, right? So I, I heard people saying, hey, you know, I don't want to learn Python because I don't know a lot of math. And um, the truth is you need a lot of math, right? It may, it's, it would be nice if you could count, you know, without your fingers and toes, but you really don't need like, no, like sine or cosine or derivatives. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Well, excuse me, you know, Kyle. So outside of Kyle, um, you know, I personally feel you don't need to like, you know, know a lot of math, basically. I think if you just do the arithmetic and you know, you know, the order of operations in, in math, that's good enough. So, yeah. Um, but, and then there's two more yeses. So the first yes is, yes, you have to have a growth mindset. Growth mindset. So in, in my interpretation is the growth mindset is you have to, uh, you have to believe that anything could be learned and anything could be uh, with enough practice and persistence that anything could be tackled, right? Even though it was a very difficult topic. So the growth mindset and you do that, um, it's going to be frustrating. Um, and it's going to be just this, uh, a lot of your hidden walls, at least for me, right? Like um, I may show a screw final, it's all clean and tested and all of that. But that's after hundreds, right? Like failures of, you know, like just just trying crap out that doesn't work, and I'll, I'll go back to it, and I'll I'll do some googling, I'll do some like Stack Overflow, and I'll sleep on it, I'll come back to it. So, growth mindset. And the second yes is speed it up a little bit because we're only like nineteen minutes in. So the second yes is um, you have to be able to practice whenever you can. So it's it's not a spectator sport. It's just like you're not gonna get you know, 19 inch biceps. If you just watch other people work out, you you actually have to go to the gym and work out. So, um, so it's definitely not a spectator sport. So two notes, you don't need to be, you know, 
education, whatever, you could get started today. And second, you don't need to do a lot of math. Um, you have to have the growth mindset and you want to practice whenever you are. So anything to add to that, my dear friend, Carl? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I think that's probably a pretty good summary. I, like, I, I think the the practice is probably the most important. And I don't know, I, I definitely feel like, well, I mean, you, you started out with not everybody needs to be a developer programmer, especially, you know, we're talking context of network automation people or network people in general, I guess. Not everybody needs to be doing much. I think everybody needs to have basic literacy and, you know, be able to kind of communicate with, you know, a different team. Like maybe you're the network team and you're really, really good at networking. Um, and then you have a network development team. You need to be able to have, you know, kind of speak the same, same language. Um, but I, I don't think everybody needs to do the whole network and like developer thing. Cause I find that as I've done more of this, I've gotten worse and worse at networking <laughs> and like, I'm sure that's why I'm going to continue <laughs> so, like being, you like, too? I don't think you can... <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's like, I'd rather be good at one thing than average at two things. And there's going to be people that are going to be reasonably good at both and, you know, not like at stellar at, at either. And that's fine too. It takes, you know, all, all it's like a whole spectrum. But uh, anyway, I don't think uh, everybody needs to, you know, go crazy. Um, but if you do want to go, uh, like, kind of commit to it, I think, yeah, absolutely. Uh, having tasks to solve and doing it all the time is the only way <laughs> like that's part of why I've kind of jumped around jobs a lot is trying to get to the next challenge and and you know grow and, and kind of go down that path like further away from networking and more toward the other thing and so it took kind of sometimes moving around and whatever um, but yeah like you're never going to figure it out if you don't do it all the time so yeah yeah I would nicely put man yeah totally so um Okay, so let's go on to the to the resources. Uh, I'm going to share my screen because some of these resources, you know, it's probably easier. Oh, sorry. Some of these that resources. Was better. I could drink water to, in peace that way. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're not off the off the hook that quickly. <laughs> no, so um, some of these resources. Uh, let me get switch this. And um, so some of these resources, um, I I made a few assumptions. So. First, the assumption that I have, because I, I want to um, talk about these a little bit, because I want to assume that you're already a network engineer, that you already know network engineering. So you're a network engineer, network engineer crossing over to do a little bit of automation to development, as opposed to the other way around, right? Uh, as opposed to a developer who wants to learn about network engineering. That's a totally different topic. So I assume you already know what a config T was, or you, you know, configure in some other languages, or like edit uh, versus, you know, interface, uh, whatever, whatever, right? But you, you get my drift. So you're a network engineer, you come up with maybe the CLI way or, you know, certification. That's all. And then you want to move these resources that I pick. And also I only pick material that have actually gone through myself. So there's a lot of newer resources that I have not gone through. So it doesn't mean they're bad or they're not fantastic. It's just, I haven't gone through it myself, right? So I couldn't really uh, put that out there. Um, I have to go through it. And um, pre when I was learning, you could probably call me like the learn Python crash dummy or something, because I would just grab all the resources out there, right? Like, if somebody said this was like semi decent, I'll be like, boom, I'll buy it and I'll, I'll read it. I have exposure and these are the resources I have personally gone through and really like. And also I, you know, I kind of err on side of um, being free and widely available. So I've also gone through like uh, University of Washington's extension program, but it's not free and that's certainly not available to everybody. Um, so that I just have to leave out on the table. But these resources are, you know, generally free, low cost, affordable. Um, and uh, so those are those are kind of my criteria. And I think the biggest thing is some a lot of new resources out there, great. Um, I just haven't gone through them myself. So, you know, no knock on them. So, yeah, cool. So let me go ahead and, and do this. So the, the first resource that I have in mind is just the Python tutorial, man. Like, did you know that a, a few Python tutorial for beginners? So they have all these, um, like, you know, loops or variables and statements, and they, they're organized nicely into... Um, different sections. Um, I have to say, like, it's kind of dry to read through them, but you can't beat, like, the official 
documentation, right? Like a lot of people put a lot of good thoughts into it. And, um, and you could also like change your version. I don't know if you're still doing 2.7, you know, God bless you if you're there, good luck to you, but, but there's there. And then also you could change the language, right? This is especially important if you're coming from uh, some, uh, some different language than English. And, you know, I think we all took for granted like some of these, these uh, uh, syntax in Python um, may be a challenge to you, right? I already have it speaking and uh, be able to like know what a for is in the context of English, right? So the Python tutorial is like the first stop with our through it. I know it's kind of boring to, to read through, but it's official and it's kind of like a gold standard to me to, to do a begin with. Uh, if you could learn from this, go for it. You know, like this is, this is great. What do you think, man? Yeah, even if you don't do that tutorial, getting familiar with Python docs is kind of necessary if you're going to do a lot of Python stuff. Like, <laughs> I mean, even even just like the built-ins page is like so good because you're going to use the built-ins all the time. So just kind of skimming them and seeing what's available. And yeah, I definitely uh, I spend a fair bit of time on the Python docs, but I do prefer my docs with more memes. But you know, that's all right. <laughs> All right, dude. No, that's fair enough. No, totally. I um, that's a great that's a great point. Um, I think the style of language is important as well uh, as you mentioned. Right? It's um the the kind of the the way that they think, the context they think in. Those are those are pretty important. And if you once you get used to that, then you could directly or the language reference and um all of that, right? So I think I think that's a good point. I mean, if you're gonna read that later on, you might as well get used to it now. Yeah, so the resource is, um, is something that I've gone through and um, I have familiarized myself again, you know, for one reason or another, which is Al's book on automate the boring stuff with Python. So right now it's in the second edition and um, it's, uh, I think the third edition is in the works, but it's not uh, pre-sale yet. So, um, so Al is great because he actually released this whole book in uh, Creative Commons. So you can actually read it for free on his website, uh, but it's also very reasonably priced, right? Like if you buy a used, it's you know, $21 on, on Amazon right now. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention, there's no affiliation uh, at all for me or Carl these resources these are purely just you know what i think are great um there's no commissions or whatever and um yeah i may know some people but that doesn't uh, doesn't cloud my job. these are all own so um so automated boring stuff is great um because it actually gives you a little project like what daniel was mentioning you pick a, pick a problem relevant to you and there's a ton of stuff in there like working with pdf working with csv uh your know, string, uh, regular expression search, all of these are, you know, I bet you, you could pick something in there that's relevant to you that you could solve. Yeah, so yeah, totally right. Um, what do you think, uh, Carl? Did, did you read this book or have you heard about this nope. book? Yeah, of course, I've heard of it. Oh, really? Uh, oh. Yeah, yeah, of course, heard of it, oh, but man, I haven't you, read it. I, I, no, 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 I, I like, for me, uh, the way I learn is, not through a book, generally speaking, um, with right. the only exception is right. that I read Fluent Python and that was a really good book. Um, but I need to, if mm -hmm. I don't type it, I don't learn it. It just goes in one ear out the other or in, you know, in my eyes and shakes out or something. So, um, but I definitely love the idea of this book and, and like you and Daniel said, just having like the kind of the, uh, you know, bite-sized things or, you know, small tasks that you can kind of get small ones with. So I, I, I love that. Yeah, I think that's definitely the the um, the goal is actually to prevent you with a buffet, and then you could take that whatever dish that you want, and then just go go in dive into it. And once you get a taste of it, it hopefully you you go further down, and then you know find other interesting problem. I think finding small wins is also important when you start it out. Is uh, getting, if you're in uh, upper world, uh, to be uh, in upper man. And uh, they will also, you know, uh, provide you with the feel that you or motivation you have for for going down further. 
Yeah. So, and also let me, let me bubble this up. This is great, right? So it's, you know, uh, reading invoices and, and our emails. <laughs> there you go, man. Yeah. So, um, so that's the first resource. And um, I'm recently rereading it again. And I really like the tone that he is very humorous. And so it's an interesting read for me. And this second book, you know, I'm sorry, Carl, I know, I know you said during, but, <laughs> but this kind of goes to right? This I recommend is learn Python 3 the heart. When I was reading it, it was just learn Python the hard way. So it was Python 2 and so on. But I think Python 3, you know, just introduces Python 3 and some of these newer features. And um, so the whole thing is that, like the whole, I mean, if I were to summarize it, is that you know, the hard way by is actually the easy way by typing it out. So back to what you were saying, right? By typing it out, by um, getting that muscle memory and uh, just doing things repeatedly and maybe attacking the same problem from different angle and perspective, the hard way, that's the hard way you presume is hard, but that's actually the easy way because it helps you learn better and um, and learn it faster. I, I tend to think you would agree to that, but you know, what do you think? I totally do. <laughs> I still just don't like, I don't, I don't, you know, everybody learns different and I just know that I'm not gonna, yeah. like, I'll just read a book and stare and like fall asleep and then not type it. So, but I dig <laughs> that idea for sure. So the like kind of, so what I think is what you want, the, the learning path should be that you want to learn uh, you're networking you to learn the basics of Python. You want to find a world problem to solve. And then you want, then you could focus on something that is more like, okay, so now I know what a loop is. I know what a variable is. Then how do I tie that in with my daily job, right? Like how do I solve the problem I have? You know, it's great that I could, you know, parse a spreadsheet and I could, you know, regular expression search a text string, but how do I, do uh, that's meant to to network engineering. So um, so I know this probably you probably have a lot more to say about this. So I'll just you know like stop right there. But um, but I I've gone through Kirk's class. So he has offered both. So he's a Kirk uh, buyer. If I say I hope not. But um, so he's the creator of NetMiko library, and he's also he uh, and also Nonier. Kind of, uh, I think they co-created um, with other people. Um, and also you can do it, right? Um, but, but he offers both like free courses as well as paid courses. I've gone through both and I really like, um, I really like both. I, I learned a lot from both and, um, I think it's well worth the money, even the pay course, but what do you think of that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Kirk is, uh, a saint. Um, he's like, re he very clear very easygoing. So like, yeah, if you're going to learn Python from somebody and like, he's got a background of networking like us, you know, so he's, uh, he's definitely a good guy to, to learn from. Um, and I actually, I, I think I was in like the very first free Python for network engineers course he did. Um, and that was kind of how I got started too. And, and then I ended up working for him for, for a while. So that was, that was pretty fun. So <laughs> if anybody takes the Nornier course, you'll pr probably see my face and in, in some of those videos at least. Um, and, and yeah, he's, he's like, if, if you're doing network stuff, he's in, you know, most of the libraries and, um, he's like the guy, uh, so he's, he's pretty much one of like the sole maintainers of Napalm at this point, or like one of the sole core maintainers. He, he's still keeping up on Nornir and stuff. Of course, not Miko. Um, right. so yeah, he's, uh, right. he's a good guy to learn from and a lot of good content in there. Yeah, I, in fact, I think that's um, that's when I first met you. I think we I was at uh, I think I want to say Ansible Fest, but it could be some other. And then I I looked up Kirk, and they're like, "Hey, you know, let's go grab coffee." And you were there, and I think that's that's uh, when you started first started to like maybe like your onboarding week or whatever. But that's when, yeah, when yeah, we first met. So. And uh, awesome, yeah. There's a quick question in there. I want to pop it in from John's. Either of you. Just, or pseudocode, like ideas on paper that you turn into Python. So I'll start now, hand it off to you, uh, Carl. So I don't, um, but there's like kind of this um, comic strip. I think it's 
XC, LD, whatever. But like, there's this comic strip. It's like you know, bunch of people were brainstorming about you know how they're gonna write their code, and then some people say, okay, uh, you know, like oh, that's great. That's you know, let's start coding. And the guy, and then put like dot .py at the end and go done. <laughs> so, so that's kind of the joke, right? Like they, they wrote some pseudo code, but because Python is so close to like English and they just put dot .py and bam, Python code. Um, but I personally don't write a lot of pseudo code. I kind of just built it in my mind. And then, like I said, I'll just keep on trying, right? Like I'll, I'll keep on trying. I'll make it work first and then uh, maybe put in and, and then, you know, put into a class if need to be, write some tests and so on. Um, you know, I, I, I don't even write that much tests, but <laughs> but that's, you know, I don't. But what do you think, man? Um, real quick, uh, I checked with Daniel. Okay. Sounds like you might be chopping it a little too. Uh, at least you're choppy for me. So just, oh. just a heads up. Um, oh, sorry about like that. Daniel was saying the same. No, you're, you're fine. I don't oh, know what okay. You do about it anyway. Okay. <laughs> but just a heads up. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, to answer the to answer the question, um, I pretty much don't write pseudo code ever. Um, same, I guess, same as you. <laughs> um, I'd love to say I do like TDD or something, but I don't allow, uh, do that either. <laughs> Although I do love tests, so um, yeah, I usually just kind of have a good idea or an idea. I I, I guess let me. I, I don't write pseudo code in like the classic. You know, here's what I want to do. It's like kind of Python, kind of not. Um, but I definitely do not shy away from writing garbage and then ripping it apart and redoing it 10 times. So maybe you could call that, you know, pseudo code, like each iteration or whatever. But um, I write hot garbage that works and then try to make it less <laughs> hot and less garbagey or more hot and less garbagey. <laughs> right. Right. No, I, yeah, I, I think you're. Uh, you're too too modest, um, but yeah, no. So so I hope that answered the question. Um, so I'll move on to the next resource, but um, which is the network automation hangout. So this is um, so I think once you you know you kind of um, know the basics of Python, you know how how to tie into your work. Um, the next step you probably want to do is just bounce off ideas and look at other people's example and kind of just get familiarized yourself with the wide array of different topics that people are interested in the problem domain or how they uh, solve the problem and those are the the resources that resource uh, community there so there's three i want to point out one is network automation hangout which is has a discord uh, discord group uh, which carl is heavily involved with i think he uh, he does it with Roman. Uh, he, he does the uh, hangout with Roman and um, Dimitri every Thursday morning. Do you want to do a little shout out on that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's uh, Roman Doden, Dimitri, and um, John McGovern, and, and me. And um, we were just kind of BSing and stuff in in a in a Discord channel. So we decided to to do a thing. And then so there were three of us basically try to keep Dimitri from going too crazy on Ansible during the the. Sure. <laughs> it's not going well but that's 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 what we're there for we're, we're just like handlers no but yeah it's uh, yeah i think that i think it was dimitri's idea kind of originally and and he wanted to do something that was not really a podcast where it was more like anybody can join so we we actually started on um oh god i can't remember this like the the like the meme platform ben awad made <laughs> and then that, that went away <laughs> um, but yeah so the idea is that anybody can come and, and join in live and you know we can have kind of more of a conversation rather than just right talk uh, you know two people right. or whatever we could include anybody so yeah that's, the, it's it's been pretty fun it, it's it's like dementia's ammo right even if it's something that he does for fun on the side and not serious about it he's still like a beautiful logo and like all of these like organized I think the, the logo might be, I think the logo is Roman. He's 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 the oh, guy okay. for logos. If you need a if you need a logo, he's on it. <laughs> all right. I, I gotcha, man. So instead of paying somebody five bucks for Fiverr, I just beg for like a, a little favor from Roman. Yeah, he, he gave me a bunch of crap. Yeah. Said uh no no logo, no success. So uh he, when he started contributing to Scrapply Go, he made us uh Scrapply Go logo. So <laughs> oh man. That's nice, man. That's nice. Um, yeah, and I saw Andy in the um, in the chat, right? So I want to do a shout out to the Art of Network Engineering. There's a specific um, 
oh, sorry, I click on it. There's a specific, um, you know, like general channel, but also a lot of um, like sub channels for technology. There's one for automation. There's one, I don't think there's one for Python, but certainly Python groups in into automation. And there's a lot of good uh, material just from like uh, battle tested point of view, right? These are people who like in the trenches every day trying to solve cabling issues, trying to um, do whatever is necessary to keep the lights on. And they use, that's how they use network, they, that's how they use automation in that regard, right? Like it might be, um, you know, I don't know, they, they might not be uh, like totally developer focused, like some developer might, might not agree with some of the concepts, but these are battle tested. You can argue with success, right? So that's, that's what I think. And uh, total shout out. And these are really nice people, a lot of positive energy in that group, uh, including Andy and who's, uh, you know, like the, all the hosts like actually encouraged me to, to find my own voice and inspiring so that that's part of the reason why I'm doing this. So that's the second community I want to recommend. And also this, right, Network to Code. So there probably is not a, a more, how should I want to say this, more enterprise-y network automation that's vendor neutral than Network to Code, right? So like if you go to uh, like the Juniper side, if you go to the Cisco side, they all tend to be a little biased toward their own stuff. And they'll try to use their own library and like they have their, opinion about like Yang, XML, and, you know, uh, I don't know, NetConf. But, um, but Network to Co is actually uh, founded by Jason. And um, I would say this is kind of like the premier place for uh, a vendor neutral place to, to learn about network automation, to learn about, you know, some of the, um, the latest news, and also um, to, to uh, and they also, actually uh, have open source projects like Nautobot, I think that's what they call, which is a fork from NetBox. Um, and also they you know, work closely with Batfish um, and uh, all of that. So I don't know if you, do you have anything to add to that, Carl, um, outside of the fact that they're vendor neutral and just training and a lot of consulting? No, just uh, Jason and Jason and Ken are super good people and um, yeah. <laughs> No, no, nothing else. You yeah, said that I mean, there. they're but they're cool guys. <laughs> that's, that's that much I do know. No, but, no, I I think that's ter that's totally important, right? Like I think um, I would much rather work with guys who I don't mind having a beer with than working work with a jerk who you know who's brilliant, right? So like that's that's my thing. It, it's just like so. It's super important to me that these guys are not at uh, you know. Uh, bad people that you know that you get my gist yeah so i want to pause here and then i want to address this this question uh basically i don't know if it gets cut up but it's it's andy saying that there's a lot of uh, material available to someone to use python and it's been a challenge to me less than a dozen python classes or books and it's definitely pick one to uh stick with yeah so that's that's true and um, I think that speaks to the popularity of Python in general. And um, it's kind of the opposite problem that I had before, right? Before I had no resources. And so I just have to like bang my head into the wall a bunch of times until I figure out my own way. And now it's like, oh, you could go, you know, there's like 10 different ways that you could pick. But I think if you see a resource that has a lot of people who's, you know, like the, uh, the the crowdsourcing of that that review like if there's a dollar review and people are rave about it then it's worth giving it a shot it might not be like the perfect um perfect resource for you but you can't go wrong with it and you just kind of have to stick to one um go through the thing and then you know what you like or don't like about it right like you you much prefer more hands-on experience or you much um prefer like more in-depth or you much prefer more width or more relevance, but you just have to, I think to begin with, you have to pick one and just follow through with it. And then from there, that's a good jumping stone to, to the next step, whether it's, you know, solving real problem, maybe you want to go into web development, data science, whatever. So do you have any thoughts on that, Carl? 
I, I think you said smashing your head into a keyboard and that's the only way I learned. So like I, I, the, the amount of resources is great, but I, you know, like I said, I don't really, really read any of the Python books or anything like that. I don't really consume any of the training content other than when I was really starting with Kirk stuff. Right. Um, so now, like now it's useful just from like, you know, you could search for things and find stuff, but usually I'm, I'm just like, no, I'm going to just build a thing and then break it and just struggle as, and that's, that's the only way I learn. So I just, you know, I just know that's the only way I'm going to ever pick anything up. Right. Right. So I would say I'd probably do half and half. Like I would, I would read the book and then I would go practice. I'll come back to it. Um, I think it's, so another area that it's really interesting to me is, um, how we learn, right? So like, um, they talk about the deliberate practice, which is like you, you stretch to the max of your domain and just a little bit more. Um, so you, it's like, uh, it's not challenging, but it's not too challenging. Just like when you're starting to learn tennis, you don't want to play your kid, right? Because you'll beat, or hopefully you'll beat your kid, you know, by, by, a, by a mile. Um, but you don't want to, you know, start practicing with Serena Williams either because you just feel like you'll never get there and you're just not good enough. Like you start questioning your life choices, right? But um, but what you want is to play with your brother maybe or somebody who's within your range. Like, you know, if you try really hard, you'll be able to beat him. So that motivates you to practice. And um, and I'll, I'll give one more example and I'll shut up about it. It's... Um, Michael Jordan, right? Like when he was growing up, he was talking about all he wanted to do was beat his brother. So he was a younger one and his older brother is always beating him, but he was close, right? Like he know if I just shoot, you know, 10 more free throws every day or practice, you know, my defensive stand, you know, 10 more minutes every day, I'll be able to beat him. So I think that actually is a good example of deliberate practice, even though they may not call it at the time, may not know it. But um, so the same thing with network automation, you you could, um, I know it's kind of difficult, but just keep in mind that if you could find a problem that's kind of just a little bit on the outside of, of, of your stretch, um, then then that's great. You know, you could, you could probably um, go pretty far with that. Okay, cool. So, so those are the communities. Um, and uh, I know um, Carl might, might like the next three because I'm going to talk about books again. <laughs> I, I don't know if you guys get a theme. I'm just a bookworm, man. Like I, I love books. I, um, I love writing. You know, there's just something about it. I know, you know, people might say, uh, you know, okay, boomer. But, uh, <laughs> but anyways, so these are the three books that... Um, that I find that are interesting. So first is by Jason, who's you know a, a co-author by Jason, but I know he's kind of the main author for for starting this project and you know working with O'Reilly um, since I was the the tech reviewer for the first half of this book. So I know he invested a lot of time as well as Scott and Matt. So network programmability automation. Um, this is very um, network engineering focused, and also uh, it, it also covers like a wide array of topics like Git. DevOps, Linux. Um, so I, I have read through this book and I would highly recommend it. Um, the second book is, you know, my book. I hope, um, like I said, like it's all about disclosing the mistakes and, you know, how not to make mistakes. <laughs> so, you know, the, the crash dummy of learning Python has spoken and uh, I put the experience down for, um, for this book and hopefully it will help somebody. And bam, John, dude, you know, like, um, I, I actually haven't read through the whole book, but, um, but you know, I just from the work that you've done and, uh, that John's done and, um, and all the involvement that he has shown in the community, I, I feel I'm confident about this book and being relevant and, um, and being useful to you. So. And uh, there's two more resources I want to talk about before we wrap up. I know we're, you know, 10 minutes uh, from the hour mark. So this is my good friend, uh, Michael Kennedy, and he does the, the Talk Python training. I've gone through a bunch of his trainings. They're excellent. They're always up to date. And he's very, um, very approachable. So, um, you know, and also I think one thing that 
um, would help is also uh, he does the does the Talk Python podcast, right? So he is very involved in the community. Um, there were times that I would pick up stuff from him that I don't even know was available. So, for example, uh, when I was at my two jobs ago, um, I was struggling to justify some of the costs of taking, you know, Python trainings and all of that. And then I heard about, you know, um, uh, like some of the, like the new particles at, uh, um, what is that? Boson. Anyways. Oh, so the, like the CERN, the CERN stuff that they talked about on the podcast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So there's so, a lot of really cool stuff on that. On that yeah, podcast. yeah, for sure. Right. So, so I actually like copy and paste the link to that episode and I'm like, do if, because with the question they had was there's, you know, real programming languages like C's and C sharp, sharp, and C sharp and, and Java. Uh, or C++, then why don't you go learn those instead of, you know, learning Python? And I would just like throw that, well, not literally, but like kind of digitally throw that on his desk and go, if it's good enough to discover a new particle, if Python is good enough to do that, it's good enough for our projects, right? So those are the kind of interesting stuff. He does a lot of um, green energy talks as well. That's one of his passion. And um, it's still, it's, it's very relevant. I learned a lot of new stuff like HTMX that I first learned about it on his show and so on. So this is a great resource just in general, maybe not network automation, but just in general. But um, for speaking from personal experience, I, um, I have picked up stuff that are useful for my daily job. So I, I take it that you, you uh, listen to the podcast as well, Carl? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Both this and Python Bytes are definitely in my subscriptions as well. And I I definitely enjoy them, enjoy them both. There's always, even if it's not directly relevant, there's like conversations are almost always interesting, you know, or they're always interesting, even if they're not relevant. So yeah, definitely good stuff. Right, right. Yeah, so Python Bytes, it's, so Michael co-hosted with Brian um, Aiken. Did I, did I remember that right? Yeah, Brian Aachen, I think. Oh, yep. Aachen. I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Brian, if you're listening. <laughs> oh, I, we'll edit that out. <laughs> you're, you're in trouble. You're in trouble now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, yeah, so uh, so Brian is the author of PyTest. And I, I actually, I bought and read his book even before I met him. So he's a cool guy. And both of them, actually, it's kind of, so uh, Talk Python is kind of like a weekly episode where they interview, you know, people in, in the Python community. Um, and Python Bytes is more like news recap on, you know, this is a new framework, you know, Django 3.10 just came out or Django 4 came out or, or whatnot, kind of news related. So this is a great resource. Just so I think this is kind of mirrors my own journey, right? So I want to learn about the Python basics. Then I want to learn about how to apply it into my daily job. Then I want to get involved with the community and uh, in the network engineering community and think about the wider rate of topics I, I, I could promise I could, I could solve. And then I want to branch out and into like the, the Python community in general. And so, uh, so that's kind of like toward the end where, you know, we're just branching out into the Python community, uh, starting with talk Python. And of course, you know, like, like what Daniel was saying, the, the real Python is kind of, um, become this go-to place. There's a, I, I know Dan does a lot of stuff that are SEO driven, but boy, like if you search a Python issue, like async IO tutorial or um, like uh, what's new in Python 3.10, like chances are the first three links that you will see are from real Python. Um, so, so they have a lot of uh, learn Python tutorials. And of course, as Daniel was mentioning, the, uh, the podcast is really good too. Um, it's not hosted by Dan, I don't think, but it's someone from the real Python team, which, you know, if you, if you talk to him, you know, like they, they really vet it out. Like they really um, take care of the quality. They, uh, they really work on having the top notch. Material and it shows in the uh, the amount of growth that they've had, right? So, uh, so you know, uh, for background purposes, real Python was not was not founded by Dan, but um, he he purchased the domain and he got, kind of grew this and into multitude. So when I saw him in person in, uh, I want to say Pi Cascade T twenty, that was before like everything was locked down. He told me like the daily average was already over a million. So which is 
crazy, right? Uh, so this is really good, you know, place and resource paid my own. Like there's no sponsor and there's no like, you're my friends, I'll give it to you for free. I, I happily pay for these because these are worth my my dollar. And, um, you know, I'm, I think these are the material. Sorry, Carl. So do you have anything to add about either uh, real Python or anything else on the resource? Anything I missed, you know, like feel free to put into the chat or, um, you know, uh, any kind of feedback or questions. So five minutes, half hour in March. But those said, go. Uh, yeah, so yeah, no, I think real Python's really good. It's very dense, which is really good and also really bad for me sometimes because my attention span is not <laughs> is not good enough for that. Um, I think the only thing else I would say, and I don't know where in the journey or whatever you want to say this kind of fits in, but uh, starting to look at source code for projects you use is like super ridiculously critical. So like if you use Netmeco or Scrapply or Nornia or whatever, um, like one, it's just, I, you know, at some, at some point, if you're going to use it and put it into production, you should at least, you know, have a reasonable idea how things are working. That's, you don't need to know every little bit, but I think it's really valuable. Um, and then two, it's, it's a really good way to learn and, and just see how other people do it. And, you know, just kind of see there's obviously people have their own style and like, you know, flow or, or how they want to structure things or whatever. And so there's a lot of good stuff you can learn uh, from, from that. Yeah, I would, I would second that. And here's a great source code that you could look at, which I don't know about library. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like some used by, you know, um, 81 people and have three, over 300 stars and, yeah, man, go go uh, go look at this. Submit a pull request. <laughs> I would encourage you to open. <laughs> no, but that's a great point. Um, I th I, um, I was a pretty good user of Ansible um, up to a certain point, but until I write modules, right? Like, so I I I wrote a module for A10, which is my employer. Um, and, uh, and then I really understood, you know, kind of their workflow, kind of the library, uh, and they have good documentation. So, you know, so that's that, that's a great point about uh, looking at people's code and be, you know, opening issues or pull requests and think think about, you know, these people are for the most part doing it out of love and and uh, for free probably. I mean, even if they're sponsored, probably just peanuts now not remotely justify the amount of time they put in right so so i, th I think that's a fantastic point thanks for yeah so there's one more uh common from daniel so comprehension skills are a great idea think of it's reading news for watching tv and then you're trying to learn yeah you know, point to, uh daniel i think um, sometimes people make coding out to be like some mysterious beast that, you know, that's, that's, that they don't, that they, they treat it as, as, uh, some kind of mystery that they cannot solve. But if you just think of it as a, like the translators, they translate thoughts and ideas into a language that computer could understand. Right. And there's no shame in you know, um, not knowing that language for sure, you know, just like I don't speak like Spanish or, or French, like it doesn't, it doesn't make me a bad person. Um, but I'm willing to learn and with, you know, deliberate practice, <laughs> then I could, you know, definitely learn and with enough, I think that's the same thing, you know, like comprehension and, uh, like you mentioned, and just kind of treat it as just another skill that you could master with enough practice. So uh, just so in summary, right? Like, so I think these resources are what I found most. Uh, my own path, you want to start with something that's free, ideally, um, you know, maybe the, the Python tutorial on PSF sites. Um, you want to learn the basics of Python. There are a few like general basics of Python. You'll learn Python, the way boring stuff. Um, and then you want to find relevance within 
uh, Python to network engineering. So that's, you know, maybe my book, maybe, you know, Jason's book, maybe John's book. Um, and then you could probably, you know, you don't have to do it. Uh, they could be done parallel. You don't have to do it sequentially. Don't be offended people, really find motivation within yourself. And, um, and then you could actually, you know, if you want, move to like the Python community where there's a, just a whole world out there for you to explore. So, um, so anyway, we're approaching the hour and um, I want to thank you for, for really appreciate it. I hope this was useful to you. And uh, you could follow me on social media at uh, Twitter at E-R-I-C-C-H-O-U. And uh, John, where can people find you? What's the best way to, you know, kind of collaborate with Scrapply, you know, uh, by beer? Like, how can I do that? <laughs> I, I don't have sponsors enabled and I, and I refuse to because it's open source. And like, I don't know, it just feels dirty <laughs> to ask, you know, normal people. To like, I don't know. It just feels dirty to me. So I'm not into that. Um, but yeah, on, okay. In, uh, GitHub and you know contribute or, or ask a question or whatever or I'm on Twitter at something Carl Montanari Carl R Montanari one of the two I'm I'm pretty easy to find so <laughs> don't worry too much about it yeah all right cool yeah I'll I'll put and I'll put all the resources in the show notes as well as you know Carl's uh, Twitter handle um, and uh, I want to again I want to thank you guys for being here uh, I really appreciate I hope this was useful to you and um, until next time. Bye now.